everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Lily and Generoso. I'm Lily. Lily Generoso! <laughs> and today we're going to make Benobokji, which is something that's kind of a snack. Um, it's kind of street food, but it's definitely super delicious. So what it essentially is, is a steamed rice cake that you fry up until it's crispy, and then you add scrambled eggs at the bottom, wow. and you fry all that up, and you serve it with a kind of vinegar soy. So this recipe actually doesn't have a super amount of prep. Unlike most of my rep recipes, this actually will involve a lot of active cooking time. So let's see what ingredients are required. So first we have some cane sugar, we definitely need some oil, uh, we have rice flour, this is definitely not glutinous rice flour, this is just standard rice flour, we have some cornstarch, we have balsamic vinegar, we have soy sauce, we have chicken broth, we have coconut milk, we have black pepper, some crushed red pepper, we have five eggs, and we have like a handful of cloves of garlic. We have pie pans, we have measuring cups, and that is pretty much it that will be needed to make your benbo jing. So I'm going to do a tiny bit of prep. We're just going to mince the garlic and then we'll show you the next step. So I have now minced my garlic up very finely and we have a soup pot with some oil heating up on the bottom. I'm going to take my garlic, put it right on in. It doesn't need to be super hot at this point because what we really just want to do is just soften the garlic a tiny bit and then add in uh, the chicken broth, which we want to warm up. Very cool. I'm going to clean off my knife because I want to make sure that garlic gets in there. I'm going to get some handy dandy chopsticks because we don't cook or stir anything up without chopsticks in this house. Don't you dare say we! Okay, it's just me. <laughs> I'm using wooden spoon! Gonna fry up this garlic. Again, just for a little bit. Not, it's not actually, it doesn't need to brown up and actually fry as if we were doing a real stir fry. We just want it to get a little bit fragrant. Alright, and at this point, I want to add chicken broth. About how much chicken broth would you say, Lily? I'm going to be adding about two uh, two cups of chicken broth. Oh, okay. very cool. Open this up a little bit better because I failed to eat it. That's okay. Two cups, you say? Yes. So here's one cup. And then two cups, and the tiniest bit for good measure. Okay. And then we're also going to add one cup of water as well. Okay. Just going to give that a stir. Pick up all the garlic from the bottom. All right, and now we're gonna let that heat up. And meanwhile, I've already filled my steamer with water. What I want to go ahead and do is turn it on high. And oh, wrong store stove. Turn it on high and let the water on the bottom and get up to a boil. So we'll see you right back when this chicken broth is warm and we start to add the flour. So the stock is nice and warm. I've turned down the heat to very low. At this point in time, we're going to add our flour. And so we're going to add two cups of rice flour. So this is going to be... Pat it out. That's going to be one. going to be two. You're going to make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup of cornstarch to this, just to let it bind up a little bit. This is not baking, so we're not looking for extreme precision. 
if you're wondering. Golly, you're not precisely measuring this. At this point, we're going to take our handy dandy whisk. We want to whisk up all the dough until this becomes a nice paste. So essentially one of the reasons why we're doing this and cooking a little bit before is so that the this is actually a little bit thicker because you've seen here before that we've um, made doughs with rice flour and water and the rice flour sinks to the bottom. We want to make sure this is a little bit of a paste before we actually begin to steam it. So at this point in time I'm actually going to turn the heat off entirely. And so we started to mix that in and at this point we can add some coconut milk to this. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. eight, oh. nine, so ten big spoonfuls. Oh, oh, oh. And we just want to mix that in. And the coconut milk is going to add a little bit of richness to the dough, which is always a good thing. And it kind of has the consistency of mashed potatoes at the moment. It's a tiny bit too thick, so what we're going to go ahead and do going to add about a half a cup of water. And just let that mix in. Oops. Sorry, Jean. Not just splashing you a little bit. Just let the water mix into the dough until it becomes a little bit more of a paste and less of a dough. So at this moment, it is dough. No. All right, I'm going to continue to stir this all in, and I will show you the next step when we pour it all into a pan and begin So, our rice powder, or rice flour and cornstarch has become a nice kind of like softer paste. At this point, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of sugar. And then I'm going to use Jean's friend. The wooden spoon! The wooden spoon, just to give it one last good stir all together. At this point it smells really nice. It's like a very savory scent. It is. A little tiny bit of coconut milk. Give it one last big roaster. And then we got our pie pan. You don't oil the pie pan. No, because I already added some oil into the actual um, dough itself I with the, the frying. Mm. We just want to fill this on up. It's probably going to make about one pie pan, actually. One full pie. Very nice and full pie pan. Very cool. So I'll go ahead and keep scooping this out and smoothing it out and making it nice and pretty. And then I will show you when we put it into the steamer. So we'll see you just in a few seconds. So we put all of our pretty dough into this pie pan and we smoothed it out with a knife. At this point, our steam is nice Ooh. and moving. So what I'm going to do is just going to take that one last bit, push it down, and then I'm going to drop this into the steamer. And we're going to let this steam for about 30 minutes or until this is nice and firm and gelatinous. So we'll set our timer for 30 minutes and we'll check back on it in 30 minutes. We'll see you soon. It's been quite a bit of time. It's probably been actually about an hour. Um, and basically what had happened is we realized that the first cake was far too thick. So I've actually split up the cakes. And this is the one that uh, I took kind of the top off of and then flattened out nice in a pan. Mm. And we're going to cook that for a little bit longer. But the other one is ready to take out. So we're going to go ahead just be very, very careful. Give it a little shake. Drain the water off of the top because you're going to see some water build up. What we want to do is just very carefully take this out of the steamer basket. It's a little bit tricky. We just use tongs in our case and a pot holder. 
and I'm gonna actually go ahead and put it right on into the freezer to let it cool off. And by putting it into the freezer, that's actually going to let the cake solidify so that when we pan fry it, it doesn't break apart. And in the meantime, we have some water in there. I've been just warming water in my kettle. I'm going to pour some extra water in here. Put down my tongs. Put the steamer basket back on. And then put our other pie back into the steamer compartment. And we'll let this go for about 30 minutes. Again, you should make sure that your rice cake is not too thick. So when you put it in any of the pie pans, you want to make sure that it's uh, no more than about half an inch th thick, and that way it doesn't take forever to cook. So we'll see you very shortly when we're ready to start frying. So we are continuing to let our rice cake freeze for a little bit, and in the meantime, I figured we'd make our sauce. It's a pretty simple sauce. So it is four tablespoons of soy sauce, one, two, three, and four, and then it's going to be three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one, Two and three. Mm. And then it's going to be two tablespoons of water. So one and a two. Mm -hmm. And then some crushed red pepper. I'm just going to shake a little bit in. Probably a quarter of a teaspoon? I'd say that, yeah. Looks right. And then a tiny, tiny bit of sugar. Probably about a teaspoon. Take our whisk. You're whisking it! And whisk this all together. I'm going to add a little bit more crushed red pepper just because I think Jean and I like spicy foods. We do. Give it another mix. All right, and that is it. That is our sauce. I'm going to cap back all of our soy sauce and our vinegar, and we're gonna give the rice cakes about another five minutes to freeze so that they freeze for a total of about 20 minutes or so. We want it nice and firm again so that it doesn't break apart in the flash frying pan. So we'll see you very shortly when we're ready to fry. So we've let uh, the rice cake cool, continue to cool off for about probably an extra 10 minutes or so. Again, the extra time the better uh, because it'll just let us firm up. So I'm going to take it out, out, and it should be nice and set now. You take your hand and it doesn't really move. What we're going to do is just going to take our knife, run it around the edge, So we want to cut our rice cake out, and then just kind of gently pull it off of the sides a little bit. Remember we added the, the oil when we fried up the garlic that went inside, so you should be able to just slide it on out. Put it face down on our cutting board. We're going to take the tin, stick it in the sink, and now we're just going to cut some slices from it. Just use a nice sharp knife to do that. Nope. What's the consistency like now, Lily? It's kind of like a, you know what it's like? It's almost like polenta. Okay, fair it's enough. It's like cooked polenta. So I'm just going to cut them into thin slices because that's how they're nicely going to be fried. It's about a quarter inch thick or so. So I'm going to cut them into bite-sized chunks. So that's how we're going to want to fry them. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue to cut this up until we have enough slices to cover a uh, small frying pan, which we actually already have on the stove itself and keeping a little bit warm. So I will see you very shortly when we finish cutting everything. Cut up a part of our rice cake, probably only about a corner of it. Um, probably about a, let's say, a little bit over 
um, a third or so of it. And we've cut them into these almost like domino-esque pieces. We're going to turn this pan up on medium high, not too high because we don't want it to burn. And we're just going to take our pieces and put it directly into the oil. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit as I'm adding them because the oil wants to fly a little bit. So be very, very careful. And we'll want to fry these rice cakes until they're nice and uh, crispy and golden brown. And you want to just kind of move them around as you put them in because otherwise they have a little bit of a tendency to stick. We'll keep on filling this up and I'll show you when the first side is brown and we flip it over and we can start to add some other fun ingredients to this pan. Alright, so our rice cakes have a nice golden brown texture and I've flipped all of them over and at this point in time I'm just going to add a tiny bit of soy sauce just to add a little bit of salt to them. Okay. Just let the soy sauce distribute across all of them and that'll give it a nice brown color. Alright, so we'll continue to let this fry on up. Again, we want uh, the bottom and the top of these little rice cakes to be nice and crispy. So our rice cakes are nice and brown and at this point in time I'm going to pour in some of my eggs. So it could be served really at any time. Um, so it's commonly eaten as street food. So it could be really at any time, like in terms of snacks, like in between meals. Um, it's also sometimes served as an appetizer too. Mm. So we just want to let the egg cook very nicely and turn the stove up a little bit for that because eggs tend to be a little runny. Again, we'd want the egg to cook entirely through for this. Well, not exclusively, you know, but like in the West, for the most part, we look at egg constantly as a breakfast food because we're kind of heavy this with fat. You know, but I understand in other parts of the world, you, eggs are just such a common part of the diet. Yeah, and it's also like really a nice and perfect treat um, for the midday. I think like right after school, I don't know, like a, it has like a nice little bit of starch and a little bit of protein. It's a perfect little boost. I might have to get my spatula to help me with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give this a nice little flip. Give it a nice. Good. It doesn't have to be perfect. So it's great. Give it a couple of extra minutes to fry up. Again, you don't want the egg to be runny at all, and you also want to make sure that the rice cakes are nice and crispy. And we'll see you right as we're ready to start eating. Our egg has fried up, and the rice cakes are nice and crispy. And this is Ben Bochi, and enjoy. Remember to serve with your soy sauce, because that's what really, really makes this super special. <laughs>